surrounded by wrestling fans. Not, not sports entertainment fans. Professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. This is the Wrestling Man's Podcast. A podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. So join the revolution. Because the revolution is now. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes! That's 1314! And make it to death! Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold Simpson! Yay! Ladies and gentlemen, we are here. And yes, the milestone's been reached. I can't believe I'm actually saying this. Two years ago, April 7th, 2014, this whole shenanigan started. Two years later, February 29th, we're here. That's right. The 100th episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast. How are we all doing? Hope you're well in whatever it is you are doing, and yes, I have guests on because we're going to talk big things today. Let me introduce you to these guests. He is the head honcho of the Max Wrestling franchise, if you can call it a franchise, but I think, I, I think we'll go with that. He is the leader, he is the voice of Max Wrestling, and on the 13th of March, here's a little something for you, I'm going to be co-hosting the show. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, Daz. Bada boom! I have no PG license whatsoever. <laughs> Join the club. PG, go <laughs> kiss my hairy ass. Anyway, we we usually say Evans the most on PG, but I just realised I'm the one that swears the most. Yeah, yeah. Fuck PG. Fuck the PG. Apparently PG's dead now, considering what's been going down lately on Raw. We'll yeah. get to that in a second. Uh, and the other guest is. A lady that needs no introduction. A lady who needs no invite on the show. All she got to do is just let me know and she can come on straight away. She can come on at the last minute. I don't care. And uh, I hate to bring this up, but the lady who sp- spoke a load of crap on Facebook the other day to me and Daz, it's the wonderful Roxanne. Hello. Yeah, I still can't get over what you said on Facebook. About? Being shy. Oh, I can be. <laughs> that's not the that, hey, wait, that's not the rocks me and Daz know, right, Daz? Well, <laughs> oh, well if we ever healthy. lose to England in the rugby, then we get shy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Yeah. I can't believe they beat Ireland yesterday, to be honest with you. But anyway. <laughs> I know I'm quite shocked, but <laughs> yeah. there we are. Strange I mean, things about Ireland us. were the six, was it the Six Nations champions. Um, I six, believe so. Yeah, six, they won the title, they won the Six Nations title, and England just destroyed them yesterday. Yeah, GG. well, I don't think Ireland are on form this uh, season at all. <laughs> well, it seems like England, huh? Which is saying something. Well, yeah, I don't know what the hell happened there. Okay. Well, that oh. works. Now, <laughs> before we kick off, ladies and gentlemen, obviously we're going to talk, yes, he's back, the boy wonder after 10 years. I can't believe I'm even saying that. But before we kick off, I just want to give a few quick promotions out, a few shout-outs. Uh, shout-out to David Anderson and Peter, who run the, who are associated with the Mystery Island. I got a little something-something. We made a deal. You know, I put promote their stuff on the podcast. They gave me some good deals. And uh, I have now in my hand, guys, which I'll put up on Facebook later for you guys to see, a signed picture of Rockstar Spud and a signed picture of Kalito. I'll put them up on Facebook later for so so I can show you guys. Uh, but yeah, big shout out to you guys. I think Blue Pants is coming to the Mystery Island uh, very soon. Also, back end of March, the Masterpiece is coming to the Mystery Island as well. Yes, Chris Masters. 
uh, yeah. former WWE superstar, and uh, Kalito's former tag team partner as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah, right. Check it out, Mystery Island on Facebook and, and YouTube as well. Be sure to check them out for all your information on that. And if you're in the area, Birkenhead in Liverpool, if you're in the area, get yourself down there, say hi, get some autographs and get some cool merchandise as well. Right, ladies and gents, with that promotion out of the way, let's get on to the main topic. Before we continue, before we talk about the other bits of the Raw, let's talk about the main topic. Yes, he's back. The boy wonder. After 10 years or over, away, he's back. He comes back, he owns Stephanie, puts her in the place, and the next minute he's going to be fighting at WrestleMania in a Hell in a Cell match with The Undertaker <coughs> because he wants control of Raw. Now, there's a lot of rumors flying around after this, after this took place. One rumor being a brand extension, Shane McMahon controlling Raw, and Triple H and Stephanie possibly controlling SmackDown, which is perfect for me. But the main rumor I want to talk about is what's going to happen, like Daz correctly said before we went on air, shenanigans in the match. Because I saw a video yesterday which had an article, which I'll put in the description below on YouTube or whenever this is go wherever this is going up, wherever you can see the description that I, that I do. Because it's a possibility that Shane McMahon could hire a mercenary to fight The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Because we all know, realistically, he's going to die in Hell in a Cell. Shane McMahon, Undertaker, Hell in a Cell is no match. If it had been any other way, Undertaker will kill him. But there's a possibility he could hire a mercenary. Somebody like a, a hired gun. That person's name that's been thrown around is Goldberg. What do you guys think? I don't see it. No, no, me. To be honest, if Shane can take Kane in his prime, I'm sure he can take Undertaker at 50. That's what I was thinking. I mm -hmm. mean, this guy took Kane to the friggin' limits. Yeah, and if he can survive a 50-foot fall as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, this guy's, <laughs> done a lot of, this guy's done a lot of things. He had a 30-minute match with Kurt Angle at, at uh, King of the Ring one time that almost killed him. Oh, that almost match. Killed, almost killed his tailbone. Anyway... So he said, anyway. He, People forget Shane McMahon's a tough bastard. Yeah, he, t he jumped off Kane at Unforgiven off the, uh, I believe it was the Titan Tron. Yeah. Kane moved out the way, he went right through the stage. <laughs> uh, he jumped off the friggin' Titan Tron at a Backlash 2001 uh, pay per view, jumped off about 40, 50 feet, jumps down, elbows Big Show, and wins the last man standing match. Which I'll never forget. Jesus Christ. You know, and he even took, like I say, he even took Kane to the limit. You know, he stood up to Kane, so why does he need to hire this mercenary? Yes, his last name is a McMahon. But, you know, I don't think he really needs to, because I think he'll give uh, Undertaker a good going. I mean, as I say, yeah. Undertaker, this is, this is his soon to be penultimate match, I believe. And I, when that when Shane's music, I, I'll admit I was salty as fuck on Monday because of fasting. But so obviously I went into Raw, not very open-minded, thinking it was going to be shit stuff. Shane McMahon's music hit. I was like a prepubescent girl in the front row of a One Direction concert. Yeah, I never expected that to happen. Again. <laughs> yeah. I never expected that. I never expected Shane back. That I'll be honest with you. Uh, what about Rocks? Well, I've got to be honest, if you have a look back through my tweets a couple of, uh, well, nearly a month ago now, um, I actually was convinced that Shane McMahon was going to be an entrant of the Royal Rumble. And when he wasn't, I was like, I don't know, it, I, nothing has actually hinted at him coming back, but I kind of had that feeling. And I thought, if I mention it enough, it might happen. <laughs> and then, well, as, as Daz said, um, I didn't have a whole 24 hours to feel salty for Fastlane because I didn't watch it live. I had a whole 7 to 10 minutes of being salty, literally finished the pay-per-view just before Raw went live. And I was really disappointed for that whole 10 minutes. And then Shane McMahon, <laughs> oh my God, 
I lost my fucking shit. Go back to February 22nd, 2016 on my Twitter feed and you'll see me just completely lose the fucking plot. <laughs> and I just, just, I was just, and even the day after, I was just messaging people like, Shane McMahon's back. And they were like, yeah, we know rocks. So I was like, yeah, but Shane McMahon's back. You know, the guy is my idol. I think I, the only time I would ever like mark out for somebody uh, like him would be like closely would probably be if HBK came back for one more match and wrestled Stone Cold or maybe maybe if CM Punk came back but I've been wanting this guy to come back for years and it looks like he's in pretty good shape and I think that he will take on The Undertaker I don't think he'll hire someone to be honest um I mean what's the point he's only like seven months younger than Triple H as I was saying to the guys on Max Wrestling yesterday you know I He's in good shape, and you know, we all know he can take a, a 50 foot fall, so <laughs> I'm excited about it. I don't know about you guys, but can you still tell I'm still excited? And we've gone, I'm, I'm, st- I'm still yeah. bouncing. Yeah. yeah I, I said the same thing. He's looking really, he's looking leaner than I've ever seen him. Mm-hmm. And as Butcher pointed out, he's got neck traps and everything. He's been in the gym hard. Yeah, whatever he's been doing has, has worked. He's in cracking shape. Yeah, definitely. Whatever he's been doing is very much worked for him. Uh, now to the sell points of Raw. Oh, yes. <laughs> Boy, there were sell points. Which was basically most of the show. I want to start off with the bullshit, quite frankly. The bullshit that I found. Because, yeah, most of it was, you know, most of it was like an episode of Superstars back in the early 90s. But there was one bit that was a load of crap, quite frankly. And that was the Wyatt family, the six-man rematch oh, with the Wyatt family and Big Show, oh, Ryback and Kane. Now, Ryback walked away because apparently the, he wants a solo career and he's sick of being tag team champions. You know, he's been tag teams and shit like that. He wants a singles run. So that's why he walked away, So, which you could understand, quite frankly. Uh, but this match should have happened, or this fallout of the six man tag should have happened in fucking fast lane. But yeah. once again, WWE bury the white family. They build them up, they build them up, they build them up, they build them up. And then it's like Vincent McMahon just grabs out a Bray White's neck and says, get back down here. Why are they doing that? I don't fucking know. <laughs> please tell me if you guys could tell me please. Because this whole uh, thing with WWE and the White family is driving me fucking crazy. I know we've got six weeks until WrestleMania, but at this point, there's literally no direction for the Wyatt family. Yeah. Brock no. Lesnar, Bray Wyatt. Woo. Let's throw that out the window, and let's make Dean Ambrose and, Bray, and uh, Brock Lesnar instead, which I have no problem with, but... Yeah, what's that lead for Bray? Yeah, where's that lead Bray? You know? Don't tell me he's going one-on-one with fucking Ryback. Oh, my God. Oh, oh my days. Days. Christ on a cracker. Because Ryback's going to probably win as well, isn't he? You'd be best to put... <laughs> Yeah, they don't have a free over. They never do. I know. Like I say, they build them up, they build them up, they build them up, they build them up, they build them up. And like I've just said there, it's like Fix McMahon just grab When it comes to the pay per view nights, it's like Fix McMahon sees Bray Wyatt above him. And he's like, come here, shit, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> just drags him back down again. It's fucking ridiculous. Currently, I mean, the same What you should thing. do, you should be, you'd be best off putting him in the match with Dean Ambrose and Brock Lesnar and just make it a triple threat fight, a three way fight. Mm. I would love that, but I know it's not going to happen. Anyway, well, there's continue. a rumour that it might be. I would mind that. Dean Ambrose, Brock Lesnar, Bray Wyatt, three-way street fight. I, 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 sign me up. I'm, I'm getting the pay-per-view. Fuck that. Fuck it. Yeah, that'll be, that won't be a wrestling match, by the way. Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose. That'll be a fucking fight. You're thinking about that now. Maybe that's why they put Bray and Brock in that triple threat match with Triple H and MSG to sort of set that triple threat up. Because obviously Triple H is going to drop the title a week before WrestleMania, is he? No. no. He's going to drop the title. He'll drop the title out WrestleMania. This is this whole thing with Triple H being champion is designed to put Roman Reigns over. Yeah, not and it's still not going to work. Yeah, not that he needs it. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I mean, that's the, what should have happened. What happened on Raw should have happened in Fastlane. Just ridiculous, man. It really is. Uh, uh, let's get to the and see what other bits can we talk about. We'll get to the Roman Reigns at Sheamus bit in a second. Uh, what, where's this going with the Usos and Dudleys? I really don't know. Do you know what? 
um, Bolly, I nearly call him Bolly, yeah. Bubba keeps mentioning Rikishi on Twitter as well. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Where's this going? I mean, are they going to put these two... I mean, is there going to be a six-man tag and maybe Rikishi comes back or something? Uh, Probably, comes... because there's been talk about bringing Spike back for a while as well. <laughs> yes. <right? laughs> All three Dudleys, Rikishi and the Usos. And yeah, that would be good. Because yeah, it, I suppose. Cause, yeah, because nobody would care about an Usos and Dudley's match at WrestleMania. No. No one would no. care. You'd be best off putting that in the pre-show if you're going to make that match. But they probably won't. Anyway, they'll probably be the US title or the Intercontinental Championship on the pre-show. And let's face it, the Dudleys basically use Spike as a weapon anyway. Yeah. Throwing him at everyone. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's... I hope they do something good out of this, but if they're going to have a Usos Dudley's match at WrestleMania, they're wasting their fucking time. Yeah, literally wasting their fucking time. It seems that the plan for the Divas title is Sasha Banks, Charlotte, and and uh, Becky Lynch for the Divas title at WrestleMania. Three members of the Four Horsewomen. Are you down with that? Yes. Oh yes. Should have happened a long time ago. I agree. Yeah, but the whole Bella bullshit and all that. Yeah, it should have happened way before the Bella bullshit and everything like that. Yeah, but and the friggin' free s- stables and whatever. Yeah. Yeah, the, so-called, never... the so-called revolution that never revolutionised anything. Oh, please. Yeah, I never understood that. It didn't make any sense. The only thing that revolutionised was Nikki's reign. Yeah, it seemed a good idea at first and then it just went tits up. It, yeah, it, pretty it, much. Yeah, it got to the uh, bit where, really, this is still going? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, 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 it made sense at first, and it was like, nah, it just doesn't make sense anymore now. Bollocks to it. And it was always like, oh, wait, oh, there's Alicia Fox. Oh, yeah, I forgot about her. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody seems to have forgotten about Paige. Yeah, I still yeah. don't get why Alicia Fox was a member of Team Bella. Yeah. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah, good excuse to find. I don't know why they dropped that psycho gimmick she was doing. I don't know. This is WWE. Yeah, of course. Yeah, they'll drop anything. Right, what? My last bit before I get to the main event. And uh, Roman Reigns getting the shit kicked out of him. I want to talk about AJ Styles and Chris Jericho. Mm. After their epic match at Fastlane, which we'll talk about later, it seems that these two are on a tag team page now and beating the members of the social outcasts yes can you see these two wearing tag team gold if they keep this up you know i kind of like where it's going really am i the only one he took a bullet for him yeah play on words bullet yeah (laughs) yeah it, it reminds me of aj's relationship with christopher daniels in tna when they came together and won the tag titles I just think that I, I think that Styles can can be on his own. I mean, I, putting him in a tag team, personally, a man of that caliber, <laughs> I don't think it works out for him. If I'm going to be quite honest, that's just me though. I can understand why people would be happy about it. I mean, it makes people hate Jericho a bit less. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, I don't know. I really, really don't. No, only time will tell. Well, I prefer AJ to be on his own, but he could be doing worse things. Yeah. Oh yeah, he he could be jobbing to Ryback. God forbid. <laughs> what do you think of the uh, the beatdown at the end? Of Roman Reigns? <laughs> you know what? Uh, Kleenex made a killing out of me for that segment. Yeah. Triple H comes out and just literally beats him to yeah. a bloody pulp. Roman's blood. May have been fake, but my white stains were not. <laughs> yeah, it was a um, pretty decent ending. Pedigree on the stairs, and Triple H just bounced his head off the announce table like a basketball. <laughs> oh, that was great. It was a very good way as well for um, them to sell the story that Roman Reigns really did need to have um, surgery on his nose. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so it was it was pretty awesome to see see that. Overall, guys, what was your uh, ratings on Raw and Smack at Raw? Overall, 
Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you? Yeah. What are we rating it out of? Is it out of ten? Yep, out of ten. Well, seeing as the average score would probably be a four, I'll give it an eight. There were some awesome segments, but there were still some shit segments as well. I'll write it down. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest, I actually went to bed before the main event because I just couldn't be asked with Roman and Sheamus. Then I woke up and saw that last bit of footage with Triple H and kind of regretted it. That's exactly what happened to me. <laughs> I fell asleep the last bit. I was just like, oh, Roman Reigns versus Sheamus main event. Oh, I'm sure I can sleep this one off. Um, for me, I think uh, if Shane McMahon hadn't come back, I probably would have put it at about a six, mm-hmm. but just because the Shane McMahon it has to be a ten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's just me being a fan girl. <laughs> but yeah, the rest of it was a bit lackluster. Yeah. Uh, tune into this week's Raw because the demon dead man himself is on Raw. Excellent. What's going to happen? Guess we'll find out on Raw. But it should be big. Hopefully anytime people watch take, it because yeah, anytime mm-hmm. the Undertaker's on, you know something's yeah. going down. And people can start bitching about it now because they'll understand why Undertaker's involved. Be patient. Yeah, it's when the Undertaker's yeah, people, on raw, something's going down. Yeah, it was just mm-hmm. people burying an angle after one episode. It's only just started. You don't know what's going to happen right. yet. Right. We'll take a quick time out, guys. We'll call it a break there. We'll be back after this with uh, talk, to, uh, talk about the uh, most predictable pay-per-view in WWE's calendar this year. Fastlane. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show you support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling, the Wrestling Matters podcast. Wrestling Matters wrestling fans. One, two, three, four, five. Boom. And we're back. That's right. Part two of the 100th episode of the Wrestling Matters podcast. And, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it, guys. We all know Fastlane. Everybody had their opinions about Fastlane. Everybody had their this, this, and this about Fastlane as well. I liked it, but the only thing that, the only problem I had with it, it was predictable. Very predictable. <clears throat> That's the only problem I have there. Clearly, the highlight of the night, or the match of the night, in my opinion, was Styles and Jericho. Yeah, that was the only highlight for me. I hated the rest of it. I don't know. That was the main highlight for me, but the two women's matches quite stood out, which is really strange because they kind of shouldn't. But, <laughs> yeah, I really enjoyed those. But the rest of it can suck a cock. <laughs> yeah. To be honest. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the matches. I'll go through the matches my way because I've got the list up on up here right now as I'm looking at this. The United States Championship, Kalisto Del Rio, two out of three falls. That was okay. To be honest, yeah. the only th- the only problem I have with that, it should have been on the fucking pay per view. Why was that on the pre show? I don't know. Especially over the uh, filler match between Truth. And... Put down the fucking pre show. <laughs> How the fuck I, that got on pay per view? Why was that know. on the main card? How that got on the main card, I don't know. What the fuck did R Truth do to get that on the main card? I don't know, and I don't fucking want to know. I mean, I like R Truth, but, but well, that shit belongs on a pre show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't. I, I look at I like R Truth when he was a wrestler. This funny gimmick that he's got, it, he's not funny. He's just idiotic. No, it does take away from his wrestling ability. It does, it does. That's, that's the thing I don't like about it. I mean, the guy comes out with the Royal Rumble and gets a ladder and puts it in the ring and thinks it's money in the bank. <laughs> really? I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> it's just it's funny. It's just... I, I, I was so funny. <laughs> oh, it's oh. stupid. Yeah. I was like drunk it's... at the time. 
but yeah. unless <laughs> the United it was more funny yeah. than it was, but <laughs> that would probably understand. That would probably give the reason why it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch and Naomi and Tamina. That was actually a good match. Yes. Yeah, so, all right. When I said I hated it, it was mostly okay, but nothing really was like wow. Apart from AJ and Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, in a Connell Championship, Kevin Owens and Dolph Ziggler. The, the, the only problem I have with this match is we've seen it before. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those matches that I really wanted to. Because <laughs> I love both. Yeah, uh, really entertainers, yeah. but I just no, I couldn't get into it. I couldn't get into it. They are flogging a dead no. horse with this right for you now. Yeah, don't get me wrong, it was a great match, yeah. but we've seen it before. All the matches that they had on Raw, and then because Ziggler beat him on Raw, yeah, well, let's put the belt back on Owens and give Ziggler a title shot. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Uh, Divas match, Charlotte and Brie Bella was, to be honest, okay. The only problem I have with this whole Charlotte thing is Daddy being at ringside. Oh, fuck, he can... Oh, I swear to God. Yeah. And obviously... The match yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to go off on one because everybody knows how I feel about him, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> and the match of the night, as we all know, was Styles and Jericho. Uh, yes, New Day was on uh, the Cutting Edge Peep show and actually did a good job because they actually put fucking League of Nations in their place. Mm. Both of them, mm. uh, Edge and Christian and New Day, because I actually enjoyed them being on the peep show, because they put the League of Nations in the place. I yes. was enjoying that segment until League of Nations came out. out and then everything yeah. just went tits up, and suddenly Edge and Christian are friends with New Day. and like, Yeah, that completely... It completely, I was completely just like, got, huh? oh, it completely got turned around. Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, and if you guys listened to the podcast last week, you will know that uh, the League of Nations will go from four to three very, very soon, should they still be around, of course. Oh, uh, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, Wade Barrett is not going to be in WWE for much longer. He's quitting. And who can fucking blame him, quite frankly? Because <laughs> mm. uh, he, apparently he's quitting because he doesn't like the position or his role in the company. That Again. guy should have been WWE champion <laughs> years ago. Yeah, I mean, can you fucking blame him for leaving? The no, been, I don't. The guy's been more fucking time in a kind of a champion. They put the King of the Ring title on him as a last resort. And they turn that in into a mockery. The King of the Rings, the King of the Ring, I've said this many, many times, not just on this show. I think I've said this on Sunday Segway. I think I've said this on many, many other shows as well that I've had the pleasure of being on. They need to bring that back on pay-per-view. I think the King of the Rings ruined because it doesn't lead to anything anymore. It like, on Brock Lesnar when it, it led yeah. to the WWE title at SummerSlam. Yeah. After that, it just meant nothing winning it. It was just a gimmick. Yeah, it, it, mm. it, 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 they've turned it into a gimmick. Back yeah. in the day, back in the day when it was on pay-per-view, it meant something. Yeah. From 93 no, to, I believe it was 02, was the last time Was the last time it was on pay-per-view. 1993 to 2002, when it was on pay-per-view, it meant something. Mm-hmm. No matter what. Well, I mean, noticed they haven't done it again this year. No, they haven't. And who can fucking blame them? I mean, <laughs> that one-hour show they had on the network, Jesus Christ. Well, I think that's probably why they're having the WWE Network special from MSG only, instead of, or no, in Canada is it? Yeah. Yeah. They I think to, that's yeah. what they're doing instead of. Yeah. They need to bring, uh, but, but they need to bring it back. They need to bring a pay per view back, even if they do the own WWE network thing that they did with the Elimination Chamber. That was quite nicely done. I actually enjoyed yeah. that. Even if they do that. Yeah. It did kind of come out of nowhere, but it was a good pay per view as yeah, well. Yeah, it was a good. Yeah. It was a good little pay per view. I mean, they did that for themselves. I don't think that was on Pete. Was that ever? Was that actually on? That was Pete? network only. Yeah. That was network only. Put the freaking King of the Ring on the network only. It was a great way when they did the Elimination Chamber on the network. That was a great way to bridge the gap between the come down of WrestleMania yeah. and um, between that and Extreme Rules. So it was a nice little way to bridge the gap. Yeah. And of course, there was the main event of uh, Roman Reigns 
Brock Lesnar, Dean Ambrose, and I don't know about anybody, but I actually enjoyed that Triple Threat match. It wasn't match of the night. Styles and Jericho was match of the night, but I enjoyed it, but I despise the end. <laughs> Not just because the uh, because Roman won, because of the way he won. It didn't sell at all. No. no. I find that he doesn't anyway. I mean, well, for me, no. I thought that Lesnar was hardly in that match. I don't know why the hell he was in there. I mean... Just to throw a suplex at uh, Brock Lesnar. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, and Brock Lesnar <laughs> yeah, got a little bit of revenge on Dean Ambrose oh. the previous night on Raw. The next night but on Raw, when he, attacked, when he attacked him in the... Uh, and stood on his head. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that, that, that finish that, at Fastlane just literally took the piss out of kayfabe. Yeah. Like I've said many, many times, does. Like I've said many, many times. People talk about, and I'll talk about kayfabe later during the fucking promo that, I, that, I'm, that I've got later on. Kayfabe died in 97. In my opinion. Uh, uh, woman means. Yeah. Um... <laughs> And then, obviously, there was all that, and obviously, I missed out the uh, complete BS with the White Family, Big Show, Kane, and Ryback. Even though Braun Strowman, Luke Harper, and Eric Rowe were in the match, I believe Bray White was in the match on Raw the next night. Mm. Why wasn't he in the match at Figure Pay Per View? I will never know. Again, this whole thing with the White Family, I think we could do a fucking whole podcast on it. Just makes no sense whatsoever. Like I said, they build them up, they build them up, they build them up, and it's either Vince or somebody. Somebody's doing it. If it's not Vince, they're just bringing back down again. I mean, they've had many, many times when they, during their first run, they were built up to, in the tag team division, and there was all these times that you thought they were going to win the tag titles, but they never did. And it's just happening again. I mean, they should never have broke up to begin with. But if you're going to do this to them, why the fuck did you put them back together for? Well, I think it could have worked when they broke up if they'd have booked Bray properly on his own, but it didn't. Yeah. They just oh. wasted a singles run. Yeah. And Braun Strowman, again, that guy needs a lot of development. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know how he's already on TV. He's not ready for TV at all. He's not ready for WWE main roster. He should have went up to NXT. And had a run in there before becoming a member of the White. Yeah, team. I mean he needs developments even to be on NXT. Yeah, that's what the, that's what the NXT is there for, isn't it? It's supposed that's to actually. be. Yeah, I don't. Has he has he even been in the performance center? I've seen the clips of him being in the performance center, uh, pictures of him in that. Uh, but I don't know if he's. Um, I, you know, I don't know if he ever had a match on NXT. Whether it was live events or the actual show <coughs> well, itself. To be fair to him, is it his ability or is it just management telling him just use one move? We don't want to see anything else from I'm you. Just put people in to a be honest, I've got a funny feeling it's something to do with management. Because usually, all right, AJ Styles didn't need to go to NXT. I mean, he is who he is. Yeah. AJ, there is a reason why they call him phenomenal. But 99% of the wrestlers that have been signed to WWE usually end up in NXT. Either A, because they want to be a part of NXT, or B, you know, they have some development they need. I.e., Braun Strowman needs a lot of development. But he never got the opportunity to be on NXT. And I think somebody in management saw him and thought, you know, he could be a great member for the White family. Let's bring him up yeah. to the main roster. Fuck him being on NXT. I'll let you show him in the White family. And break a take him. Which, mm. I don't know about you. Has not worked one bit. I think, um, like Samson would have fitted better in the Wyatt family. Yeah. Or, as much as I hate to say this, Bo Dallas. That would, yeah, that would have made sense. He, he <coughs> oh. Yeah. Why is Bo Dallas a member of this social outcast group? I'll never know. But he would have been more fitted in the Wyatt family. He could have been the run to the letter. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, this whole thing with, and like I said, when Social Outcast came out on Raw and got into Wyatt's face and confronted the Wyatt family, I swear Bray looked at Bo and was like, that's my brother. <laughs> really? My brother is with these three morons? What yeah. is life? What is life? 
I'd have been that. I mean, if you, you'd, you'd, when you look at Bro Dallas in the social outcast, you do not think he's he's the brother of Ray White. That just no. takes it all away. And like I said, don't get me started on the on the social outcasts. I mean, Adam Rose couldn't get over with his gimmick on Raw because he only got time he got over with his gimmick was on NXT, and they turned him heel, which was okay. Curtis Axel hadn't been relevant since he won the Intercontinental Championship. Not that he was relevant when he won the Intercontinental Championship to begin with. He was a Phil mm. Paul Heyman guy. And then the last time he was on TV before this social outcast, they turned him into Hulk Hogan. It's all been a bit of a mess. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 you know, it just makes no sense. And don't, like I say, I've made my feelings crystal clear about Heath Slater. That guy's had more friggin' groups or factions in WWE or been a part of them than I've had girlfriends. <laughs> you know, it's, you, know I, I, you know what? In WWE, I call him the faction boy. Because yeah. like he's like he's been in more groups than Slash. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think even Slash would be proud of him. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was in more groups than you, fam. I mean, how many groups has Slash been in? Two. Two to my knowledge. Um, oh, Guns and Roses problems. and uh, Velvet that? Revolver. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. Velvet Revolver. Yeah, that's the only group. That's the only two that I know. It might be in some other groups. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it was just you know weird. <laughs> and like I say, Curtis Axel versus R Truth had no business being on the pay per view. Mm-hmm. On the main card. No business. No. I mean, it just shows how much thought they put into Fastlane when they had to yeah. fill it with a talk show segment and a yeah. throwaway filler match. I thought it was going to go talk show, then main event. You know, the talk show segment, then the main event. I mean, I can see why they did the talk show segment to plug Edge and Christian's new show. Yeah, I. That's why. Yeah. That's why. That's why it got over with me because, like they say, after the show, but after the pay per view. Edge and Christian show debuted on the network. Which is quite funny, actually. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, it's not quite it's like good. I need to get back to watch yeah. it again. It's good. You, you kind of want to watch it. It's, it's quite funny. So I saw a bit of it, but then you know it was like four four o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch this again. Yeah. <laughs> but the Curtis Axel R Truth thing was a filling moment. It was surely it was like a fill in time. Oh yeah, we'll just fill in here and here and here and here, you know, and do this, this and this. Fuck off. You had no business being on the pay per view. If you wanted to do something like that, do something like that. Put that on the uh, pre show. I bring the US title up. You gotta put the US title in that in that slot. Exactly. Yeah. You could put the US title in that fucking slot, but no. They give us some bullshit force fed match that no one knew about that no one cared about at least we know what the pay per view at least we know what the bathroom break was <laughs> <laughs> and it was Curtis Axel our truth and anything uh-huh. with our truth in is a bathroom break for me and again it was basically about this will they won't they relationship with uh, yeah and gold was this, is driving me just this is just driving me nuts now I'm, I'm done with it if you're going to put these two idiots together, then do it. It probably won't get off as much as Booker T and Goldust back in the day. Mm. But you know, I thought that's what they were trying to recreate because Goldust even started stuttering again. Like, when did he get electrocuted? It was uh, again. It was before WrestleMania. It was uh, back in Evolution days. Yeah. That was like 2003. Like, did yes. he get thrown into a fucking fuse box again or what? He did, yeah. <laughs> he, he did back then. I don't know if he's done it. It seems like he got thrown into it again, yeah. Yeah. It seems like he did. We didn't know about it. <laughs> but I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. It really is. It's just petty bullshit, in my opinion. 
it, it, like I said, this also whole thing... Time, Booker T was very, very over at the time. I don't think Truth is quite that over. No. The truth is not. That goes, that's why I'd say it won't work. It won't work as good as Booker T and uh, Goldust back in the day. It will not work. I mean, when I saw Booker T and Goldust back in the day, it was like it was like watching an episode of Keenan Kel. <laughs> it really was. Yeah. The Keenan Kel Nickelodeon vibe. About it. <laughs> Obviously, you won't get that with our truth and Goldust this year. This is just some. This is just something of a bad comedy sitcom. Yeah. A really, really bad comedy sitcom that I never watch. And some very bad innuendos. Yeah, for fuck's sake. Mm. He, go, he goes to the toilet, he opens the door, and he's right there in front of him. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. The whole thing, the whole pay-per-view, out of ten. I know I'm not going to expect a higher number on this, because I never give the higher number myself. It was a good pay-per-view for me. The only problem I had with it, it was very predictable. Out of out of ten, your rating. Uh, like you said, predictable, average, one or two good matches. I'll give it a five. Rocks. Yeah, like guys, I'd say. Yeah, the same. Yeah, five. And that's the end of the fast lane main talking points and review and whatever else we were doing there. Right, we'll be back after this quick timeout. This little timeout we're going to have. We'll be back with uh, one word for you guys. What we're going to discuss before the promo that I will put on the show, we're going to discuss Walt Culture. That's right. Probably the most entertaining website and entertaining YouTube channels that they have on WWE. So we'll take this quick time out. We'll be back right after this. Stay tuned. If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast now on Twitter at WM Podcast for all professional wrestling news. Wrestling Matters Wrestling fans. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen, for part three of the Wrestling Matters podcast, the 100th episode. Hope you're enjoying the show so far. If there's any problems during the show or anything like that that has been hard for you to hear or anything, uh, I apologize for it. It is it is what it is, but hopefully you guys have heard this crisp and clear, and hopefully you guys have enjoyed the episode. Just want to give a quick shout-out to ICW. I will be reviewing their show I'll be watching the uh, Friday Night Fight Club this week, uh, the one that came up last week, uh, the disintegration of the NAK episode as well. I'll be watching that this probably the minute I'm done here or whenever I can, to be honest with you, this week. And I'll, if, I, if I can, I'll review it this week. If not, I'll review it on next week's show. So ICW still matters on the Wrestling Matters podcast. Just not for today. Sorry, guys. But, uh, yeah, the only thing that matters on this podcast today is the stuff we're doing, and the main thing that matters is the main event, and that's the promo that I'm going to be cutting later on. That's right. Stay tuned for that. But, like I say, ladies and gentlemen, before the commercial break, it is the What Culture Wrestling. That's right. I love this site. I love these guys. I'm just talking about this during the commercial break. Apparently, Daz is trying to reach out to these guys to get on to get them on this show I'd like to do the same thing as well and if you guys ever listen to the show you know me Daz in particular Max Wrestling we'd like you guys to come on the show especially you Adam you and your little creative mind WWE should book you should hire you in their booking team and probably make you head book, head writer or something but anyway Ten booking decisions that legitimately upset WWE superstars. Boy, was this good. I had a look at it during the week. Very, very intriguing. Just like everything that rock culture does. Number ten was Rowdy Rowdy Piper despising the idea of working with Mr. T. <laughs> leading into WrestleMania 1. 
What do you guys think of that? I can imagine, I can believe that. <laughs> yeah, because it is legitimately true. Yeah. It is legitimately true. <laughs> Wait, he hated the fact that, you know, he hated the fact that this outsider, as he was known, Mr. T, was coming in to be a part of, at the time, the biggest show that Vince McMahon had ever put on in his life. And there were certain things that were going down. If you read, if you watch the Legends of Wrestling show on the network, I think Piper talks about this very openly and says that there was stuff. He and Hogan, I believe it was him, though, worked that angle that you saw in that match because if it went a different way to involve T in it, it would have been a whole clusterfuck. That's what Piper believes anyway. What do you think? What do you think about it, Rox? I don't know. I I can understand why he wouldn't want to work with him. <laughs> he was bad, like I mean, just think they had that match at WrestleMania one. Yeah. And then the following year at WrestleMania two, they had the, probably the worst boxing match I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> well, Mister T. He's not. Go. Yeah, he's, he's not any of them. Like, do you know what I mean? I don't believe him. I, I, if someone had to tell me I had to go up against Mr. T, I'd fucking lose my shit as well, to be fair. I don't yeah. blame him. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hated Big Show Mayweather as well. Yes. Oh, God. That wasn't really a boxing match. That was, just a, that was like two guys going at it in a street. If they had a the top ten most pointless wrestling matches lists, Big Show would be on their reoccurring times, I think, anyway. Yeah. So. That big show, <laughs> that big show Merryweather match was not really a match, really. It was just like two guys basically in a street with people surrounding them two, like in a circle kind of thing, and just having them go at it. That's what it was. May- Mayweather's an idiot anyway, so. Best fighter in the world. He's proven that against all you Manny Pacquiao marks out there. I still think that that was a fix, but you know. Probably was. I mean, most of the freaking fights nowadays are fixed anyway. Yeah. That's why I very have a very hard time watching UFC. And I mean, don't get me wrong, the UFC put on great fights. They do, but the thing that fucks up the UFC for me is the fucking judges. Yeah. That's the thing that I can't stand. I mean, so and so, so and so, so and so is winning this fight and everything, you know, da 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 da, and then the guy who would get his ass kicked for most of the match ends up winning the fight because of the judges. It makes no sense. If they if they could control, if they if they could sort their judging thing out, UFC would be. <coughs> well, that's it. It's not, but UFC would probably be as huge as it it is now. Yeah. But that's the only thing that's holding it back, and that's the uh, the judging bullshit. Anyway, number nine, CM Punk was confused by the Shield situation. Now, I believe. I believe, if I remember correctly, just looking at this here, CM Punk, I believe, pitched this to management. Yeah. This idea of the shield. It was CM Punk who pitched it to management, but he didn't want... He wanted Dean Ambrose, he wanted Seth Rollins. He didn't want Roman Reigns. He wanted to put... Was it... Cassius uh, Ono, Chris Hero. Yeah, he wanted to put them in the in the group, but WWE Triple H in particular decided now we'll go with Reigns. I mean, I mean it was basically a bit, it was basically a combination of Vince McMahon and Triple H to be quite frankly honest. Uh, I mean, what do you guys think of that? Would it would it have worked if Chris Hero had been in it? Well, knowing what we do now about Roman, I think uh, Chris Hero would have worked better. Yeah, I agree. But at the time, it wouldn't have looked like it would have worked. Yeah. Yeah. I think. But you see where uh, <clears throat> see where Punk's coming from. But like, I don't know. There's there's always part of me, as much as I love Punk, there's always part of me that believes that he he seems to think that he's responsible for the Shield, and I, I disagree with what he said. I mean, but, at the end of the day. I couldn't understand why they didn't go with Cassius Ono, Chris Hero, because 
I don't think WWE knew what the fuck to do with him anyway. No. At the time. I mean, this guy was having feuds with William Regal on NXT. Mm -hmm. That was probably his highlight moment before he got released. I mean, they still understand, I still don't understand why WWE didn't pull the trigger and go for their version of the Kings of Wrestling. Because that would have been epic. You know, Cassie Sono, Chris Hero, Claudio Castanoli, Cesaro, you know, put them two together as a tag team. They, I mean, they got over in, w, in their Ring of Honor. I think there would have been a huge hit in WWE, but WWE did not pull the trigger. Again. Again. <laughs> Number eight. I think this goes back to 1996, late 1995. Or going into Royal Rumble 1996. Razor Ramon didn't want to work with Goldust. Something wrong with him. And I can understand it, considering what Goldust was doing at the time. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, at one time, he even kissed Ahmed Johnson on the lips, mouth to mouth. I don't think I would want to do that as well. I mean, I know that was after, I believe that was after the, the match, but it was, it was, I think it was what made, from what I saw and what I remember, what made Razor Ramon did not want to work with Goldust was the build-up to it. I mean, can you remember the... Uh, the messages that he was sending and the photo stuff and the fucking tattoo he showed of Razor Ramon on his chest and shit. That would have fucking legitimately scared me. Away. And then it all led to my and it all led to Monday Night Raw episode where Razor Razor Ramon completely beat the shit out of him backstage and they ended up fighting in the snow. Go on, Rock. No, I was just gonna say I think um a lot of that is just Scott Hall's uh ego, Razor Ramon's ego getting in the way, yeah, it always has then, I mean, I've always uh, loved uh, Razor Ramon from as long as I can remember <clears throat> and uh, I, I loved him as Scott Hall you know um, in, uh, in WCW but he's a bit of a creep, but from a <laughs> from a wrestling point of view um, his ego always has and always will get in the way of everything. It everything's got to be on his terms, unless he's calling the shots. He's not interested. So I do agree with, you know, he should have, uh, he should have wanted to work with uh, Goldust because Goldust is a, a really good wrestler. As well, creepy as he was, I think it would have worked. So and it did him. work. It did work hmm. because at Royal Rumble '96, Goldust won the Intercontinental Title. Yeah. Not to mention that um, Don't... brawl he had with Piper at WrestleMania. Yes. The brawl that was basically staged to a point where it looked like something out of an O.J. Simpson chart. <laughs> uh, anyway, number seven. Now, this one's an interesting one because I definitely remember this very, very well. And it was one of the reasons why the guy went to WCW in the first place. Randy Savage getting hot over his announcing gig. For those of you that don't know, WWE, Vince McMahon, wanted to go into a new generation, a different direction. Which meant nothing for Randy Savage in terms of wrestling. So Vince wanted him to join the announce team. Savage didn't want to join the announce team because he, he's felt that he still had some juice left in him. Which he did, quite frankly. But Vince McMahon did not want to have him wrestling full time. There was the only occasion he did wrestle. But he didn't want to have him wrestling full time. He wanted to do the announcing. Hence the reason why Macho Man ended up signing a deal with WCW. And left WWE to go to WCW. And the other, and the other reason why, w, why Savage left for WCW was because of Hogan. As well. But what do you guys think of that one? Um, I, don't know, I, I was kind of entertained by Savage on commentary, but I can understand why he wouldn't want to join the commentary team, especially if he still felt he could still go. Yeah, he still. I mean, he did have some matches, like I said. He wasn't booked all the time. It wasn't like a full-time thing for him, because he, like I say, he was mainly on the uh, the announce booth. But uh, he did have some I mean, matches. I remember one match he had with the Repo Man. I mean, as good as he was a couple of weeks ago, I don't think Jericho would be happy if he's a commentary because he's 
still got some juice left in the tank. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. How about it, Rox? I, yeah, I I totally agree with um, how he probably felt. I mean, it was quite obvious he still had uh, he still had some fight left in him. I mean, he did have a, a couple of decent matches in WCW. Um but I mean, I think I think a lot of it was because Vince McMahon liked Savage so much, he wanted to keep him there, um, you know, for future endeavors. I don't think that the uh, commentary team idea was going to be forever. But uh, you know, I think that if um, if they had kept Savage wrestling in in the WWE for you know, longer than they did. I think that the WWE could have gone in a different direction, as would have uh, Savage, to be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge Savage fan, so, I, I mean, to tell, for, for, for your, your boss pretty much to come up to you and say, you can't do what you love anymore, you have to do this because I want to keep you here, I, I don't believe in. I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Right. We'll whiz through these a little quickly now. Uh, number six was Austin's willing to throw away a match with him and Brock Lesnar. Now, for those of you that don't know, they wanted to have a match with Austin and Buck, Brock Lesnar on Raw in the King of the Ring, but Austin wanted it to be a big pay-per-view match. You know, he didn't want to job out to... Uh, to um, Brock, he didn't want to put Brock over. He was willing to do so, but he wanted to make it into a big business thing. He wanted to make it into like a a built-up match. You no, know, have some build onto it, not just like put it in Brock Lesnar versus Stone Cold. Here you go, there you go, without any build towards it. Yeah. What do you guys think of that one? Yeah, I mean, I've heard him talk about this many times, and he's basically said, "Wait, had no problem laying down for Brock." But the way he saw it, it was just a throwaway match, and they were stupidly just throwing away a big money angle. Yeah. yeah. Which is obviously why he left for eight months. Yeah. I agree. Totally. Okay. Okay. Then we'll move on to number five. The night that Kayfabe died for me, Bret Hart finds himself screwed by Vince McMahon, and as it was known later on, Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Survivor Series 97. The night that Bret Hart wouldn't drop the title to Shawn Michaels because these two couldn't stand one another, but he wouldn't drop the title to Shawn Michaels in... Uh, he wouldn't drop the title to him in Canada, of all places. Ooh. But uh, he was wanted to drop it the next night on Raw, but Vince McMahon couldn't take any chances because of his big unrowing rivalry with WCW and one Eric Bischoff. And considering what Medusa did to the women's title at one point... I don't think Vince was willing to go down that same route again. So, what happened? He screwed Bret Hart, and Shawn Michaels ended up walking out with the title. Now, despite the fact that Shawn denied it, it was later revealed that he did have something to do with it. Yeah. What do you guys think of that? Yeah, thinking about it now, surely Bret could have seen how successful it would have been for Shawn Michaels to get that win in Canada. I mean, that's big. He obviously had big heel heat anyway. Yeah. But, you know, Brett should have seen the business in that. He would have been over as a major heel. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) If that had happened. Brett should have seen that that was good for business, making Shawn a huge heel by taking the title away from him in his own home country. Yeah, but like I said, Daz, these two couldn't stand one another back then. Well, yeah, that's true. So, again, you know, it's egos, isn't it? Okay, to move on, Mm -hmm. because we'll move on to number four. CM Punk didn't agree he should lose to Triple H. Now, I believe this was at Night of Champions. Night of Champions pay-per-view in 2011. He wasn't exactly thrilled by what was going to about to happen. Again, during his interview, apparently he made it clear that he he thought losing to Triple H, it was stupid. And to be honest, it was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Looking back on it. Yeah. 
I mean, people can say what they want about CM Punk now, but you can't sit there and tell me that back then anything about Triple H beating CM Punk made any sense at all. Yeah. Was that really? the day where Kevin Nash attacked him? Uh, no, that was SummerSlam. I think. Well, no, that, did that, he come that, back no. at Night of Champions? Yeah, I was going to say, didn't he attack them both at Night of Champions and then it all led to Triple H winning the match? Yeah, I think it did. If yeah. I remember rightly. Yeah, well. Because go. he was supposed to be wrestling Nash at Night of Champions, wasn't he? And then it changed to Triple H. Yeah, you could probably understand why the shit like that happened then. It was all no. stupid. It was stupid. Mm-hmm. stupid. I mean, it didn't derail. It didn't derail um, Punk's rise or anything. He still became over his fucking obviously 434 yeah, got... days, but still, it was a stupid decision. The yeah. thing that made Punk, yeah, it was a stupid decision. But um, the thing that made Punk over his fuck anyway was that promo he did. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he spoke goes the truth. Again. He spoke the truth. Yeah, but it's all egos. Number three. Chris Jericho was left baffled over WrestleMania 18's build. Now, I believe this was his build into his match with Triple H at WrestleMania 18. Yeah. And you could probably understand. I mean, Triple H's wife is Chris Jericho's manager. And, you know, you could look back on bit retrospect. In my opinion, back then in 2002, when Jericho won the Undisputed title, I don't think he should have... You should have um, won the undisputed title at Vengeance. I yeah. would have had him win the Royal Rumble. Yeah, I agree. To be honest. Yeah, but, but the they were, they were at this stage back then when coming back from an injury <coughs> to the Royal Rumble, then you went on and won at WrestleMania. That was just a big thing. Yeah. I would have had Chris Jericho do that. Mm-hmm. Win, the ma- win the Royal Rumble match and then have him go to WrestleMania to win the title. Didn't they no matter who we beat, Rock, Austin, Triple H for all that, well, I know, couldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't have cared. Didn't they incorporate yeah, could... the fact that Triple H tore his quad against Jericho as well into that feud, even though it was Triple H's fault, kind of? Yeah, that mm. was that was early on. That one, yeah, that was, yeah, that was, yeah, that was during the tag team match, which involved Stone yeah, Cold. because uh, Jericho had um, Austin yeah, in Jericho, the walls. Jericho, yeah, yeah, yeah. Triple H just came behind him and sort of bumped into yeah. him and tore his quad. Mm. And then to so make matters really worse, Jericho for that. yeah. And uh, to make matters worse, Jericho put him in the Boston Crab. That line, that Walter Jericho. Oh yeah, that which, probably was his fault. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, I don't care who you are. You tell your crowd and you get put in the butt walls of Jericho, the Boston Crab. That don't help. Props so, to H for finishing the match, though. Yeah. Yeah. And again with the when he tore it again. Yeah. He's a true professional, if nothing else. To be fair. Yeah, you might hate the guy, but I love Triple H. You can get the you can get the job done. I lo- I love Triple H. I don't like this authority p- thing that he's playing, but I'll love- say this right now. I might get in some heat for saying this, but I'll kiss Triple H on the lips if I if I ever see him for what he's done for <laughs> NXT. I love Triple H. I just don't like when his ego gets in the way of business. Yeah, that's the only that thing past. I don't like about him. I mean, he's done, this he's done guy it took, quite a few times. Yeah, this guy took. NXT from what it was a fucking game show and just went in and went here you're not a game show you're going to be my brand and it created this beautiful brand we see to this very day mm-hmm. so I could I, I, I could kiss him for that because that's what WWE needed because let's face it you weren't getting shit on Raw and Smackdown at the time the only uh, time you got that was and a brand extension wait for him to take over main roster yeah he needs, to, to, to be honest, he needs to do that now. Oh, he does. He should have done it two years ago. Yeah. I have them have all on the roster. I have them control all three. Yeah. Anyway, number two. Now, I know a lot about this because this was actually on my birthday weekend. It was at SummerSlam, and Shawn Michaels hated the fact that he had to job out to Hulk Hogan. Hmm. This was the SummerSlam match, I believe it was all five. Yeah. Sure, Mike Who goes. wants the job to Hulk Hogan anyway? <laughs> Especially many in people, 2005. <laughs> many people, I know. If you, watch the, if you watch the HBK DVDs, or DVD, many people believe that Shawn Michaels should have won this match. I Ted agree. Ted DiBiase to name a name. Mm-hmm. But... Uh, 
I believe the reason why that Shawn Michaels ended up losing this match, not that it was a bad thing because fucking Shawn, because I'm a Hogan, I'm a Hogan mark to this very day. I don't care what anyone says. Hogan's the reason why I'm I'm in wrestling. Fucking Hogan's the reason why I'm doing this podcast. But I believe the reason why Hogan got over it, or wanted to go over on Shawn Michaels is because he was undefeated at SummerSlam. That's just my saying on that. That's just my view. But anyway, Shawn Michaels ended up dropping to him. And like I said, many people believe that Shawn Michaels should have won. One name in particular, Ted DiBiase. You guys, what do you guys think of that one? Mm, yeah. Mm, yeah. So we're on to dream be- on that one. To be fair, though, he probably saw it as well. Rock can beat Hogan. Like, a couple of years ago, why can't I? Yeah. Yeah. Mind you, a couple of years ago, prior to that, Brock almost killed Hogan. <laughs> on SmackDown, if that was the match you were talking about, Daz. But he bear hooked the shit out of him. Mm. To the point where he ended up whacking him with a chair and blood was all over. He almost fucking killed him that night. That was leading into SummerSlam, when yeah. he eventually won the title. I mean, Hogan came back, job to the Rock at WrestleMania, job <laughs> to Brock Lesnar, who was getting a push from hell. Yeah. And then he probably just felt like being used, I suppose. I can't wait to deliver my questions on your show, does <laughs> on, the th- on the 13th. Because I've got some questions that I don't think even your, your crew ain't going to get. To be honest, there's a couple. There's one. I'll, I'll say this: there's one question involving my podcast, but there's a couple on there that I know for a fact that you won't be able to get. Well, oh, Butch has been on wait. fire lately. Yeah, he's been really good. He helped me out big time at Max Wrestling yesterday. He helped me and you out. I've got yeah. to Butch on the show as well. But uh, Butch told me one time that he said he does it alone. So, you know, I mm. want to get him on with the show, but he he told me one time that he wanted to do this alone. Mm. I'll have a way with him. But anyway, Butch, if you're listening, get in touch with me, pal. Anyway, number one. Now, I can understand. I can understand why this is number one. What? Sorry, that's something from the Max Wrestling podcast. Yeah. Tag. Tag out. The way he says it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, inside joke, guys. You have to listen to Max (laughs) Wrestling to find out. I was going to say, the next time I'm on Max Wrestling is March, t- March 13th, and it does. Yes, our first anniversary. Yeah. Mm. That's the next time I'm on Max Wrestling. I'd have probably be on before that, but I decided to agree to co-host the show, so look out for that, ladies and gentlemen, March 13th, Max Wrestling. It's hosted by Daz and moi. That's right. Can't wait. Hostile Takeover begins March 13th. Anyway... Number one, now I can probably understand why this is number one. Bret Hart was angered and pissed by the fact that Hulk Hogan beat Yokozuna at WrestleMania 9. For those of you that don't know, Bret Hart was screwed out of the WWE title at WrestleMania 9 thanks to Mr. Fuji. Oh, I love Mr. Fuji. Yeah. But for some strange reason... For some strange reason, it ended up being the fact that Hogan ended up winning the title and walking out of WrestleMania 9 with the championship. Which was supposedly supposed to um, go into a match at SummerSlam involving Hogan and Bret Hart and Hogan passing the torch to Bret Hart. That's what Vince McMahon wanted. But it seems that Hulk Hogan did not want to lose to... (coughs) And I quote, someone smaller than him. What do you guys have to say about that? Because I know what I'm going to say, but I know, my, I know I'm not PG in that, but I think, Jesus Christ, I'll, I'll probably get into trouble for it. Because <laughs> it just sounds ridiculous. No, I never understood that ending. It just it sort no. of came out of nowhere. It seemed good at the time, but when you look at it now, and, you know... Well, it was his really last WrestleMania for... Until WrestleMania 18, wasn't it? Yeah. So it was just, it was just kind of, it was like a swan song. Just he basically one last left title. after King of the Ring. 
Yeah. He basically left after King of the Ring when he jumped when he jumped out the Yokozuna. That's what he, that's what happened when he jumped. He lost the title to Yokozuna in a moment that made the Dean Ambrose Bray Wyatt match look like something out of Toys R Us. <laughs> the uh, old camera exploding incident. I mean, it's the whole situation. It's just mind blowing. I mean, that's why when he went to WCW, Bret Hart considered that he was ducking him. You know, ducking him and ducking him. And even the match didn't go over well in WCW when he eventually had because it ended up being that Bret Hart ended up turning heel, which was bullshit. But anyway, that is about the end of that countdown. I don't know what you're thinking, guys. Yeah. You can understand why we wrestling fans usually get frustrated. Because <laughs> of shit like that. And and there's ten booking decisions that legitimately upset WWE superstars. They should have added and fans to it. Hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong. The number one was okay at the time. But looking back at it now, you can understand why. Uh, what? Before I get on to the next bit, I've just, I've just found out something here. There's an article here on this World Coaches website that says Alistair Overeem wants to fight Brock Lesnar Again? or face Brock Lesnar in WWE. Yes, I've seen it. The man that supposedly ended the career, some people say, of Brock Lesnar, even though technically he ended his, U- he ended his UFC career because of because of uh, the diverticulitis illness that he had. That's the reason why, otherwise he'd still be doing it to this very day. Even though there has been talk that he's that he's going back. But I don't think Alistair Overeem would last at WWE, quite frankly. Or be, or be booked right. Anyway, moving on. Same we'll throw same. this in. We'll throw this in. Vince McMahon's biggest overreactions. Are we done with the uh, booking things? Yeah. I've got one I'm surprised isn't on that list, actually. What's that? Um, When Undertaker wasn't happy about the ending to Unforgiven 2002 with Brock. So he decided to go for the DQ. I never knew about that. I never knew about that. He didn't want to lose straight away to Brock. Yeah. So we went to Vince and said, um, we're going to throw the match out and go for a disqualification, and that's why you threw him through the engine stage. I never knew that. Mm. Good God. Good call. Good work, Mr. Daz. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I never, I never knew about that. You learn something new every day. Oh, you do. All these podcasts. <laughs> anyway, let's throw this in, because I damn sure want to talk about this. It started the 10 biggest overreactions from Vince McMahon. Number 10, the grab heard around the world. And we all know where that was going. Titus O'Neil. Suspension City. Suspension City, bitch. Which was during the, uh, the Daniel Bryan retirement. And it was supposedly he was suspended for 90 days, but it got cut down to 60. Well, he's still going to mess for WrestleMania, isn't he? Yeah, and the biggest thing about it was he suspended him during celebrating Black History Month. <laughs> well done, Vinnie Mac. You could bet. You could bet the fact that that got over well, didn't it? You can imagine that, ladies and gentlemen, that got over very well. <laughs> oh yeah, we're celebrating Black History Month, and Vince McMahon suspends Titus O'Neil. Sick. Number nine was Lana. Now, we all know why, because the whole situation with Lana and the storyline that she got put into with Dolph Ziggler, and then it was revealed on TMZ that she actually was still together with Rusev and the ex club, and he ended up getting engaged. And ever since then, this whole plan for Lana to be the, the face of the Divas division got brought back into phrase, and ever since then, she's been in the doghouse. Can you understand that? Mm, yeah. Number eight was the fine for Stone Cold. Now, 
this was going back to when he walked out. And, like we all know, Stone Cold still to this very day admits it that it was the wrong thing to do at the time. Mm. It was the only thing he had to do at the time, but it was the wrong thing to do, and if he could change it, he probably would. Do you know what I really like about Stone Cold? Is he admits when he was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's my idol. <laughs> the fine that originally was set for Austin for walking out was $650,000. But it got cut down to 250 k I don't know how that happened, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> Number seven was... Probably merchandise sales. Yeah. <laughs> Number seven was uh, giving CM Punk probably a win present that he'll never forget. Ah. Pig slips. Basically firing CM Punk on his win day. His win to AJ Lee. Mm. Of course. Which was... Which kind of brings to question this whole be a star bullying campaign that they do. <laughs> And then Vince McMahon goes and pulls a stunt like that. And it said that he didn't mean to do it, but I don't think anyone's buying that. Well, Punk didn't buy it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so obviously, a lot of people are. Hang on. You you support you send guys his termination papers on his wedding day, and you you did you, you come out and you say you didn't mean to do it do you think CM Punk do you think anybody if you send somebody on their, t their termination papers that they're fired from a job on their wedding day do you think anybody's going to buy the fact that he didn't mean to do it yeah yeah. exactly CM Punk's very mad right now a lot of people believe him a lot of people don't but the funny I thing is him. with Vince he waited until he had this live network broadcast to apologise it's very convenient Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't he apologise on Stone Cold's podcast? Yeah, that's what I mean. <laughs> then Punk just came out the next week and said, I'm just full of shit. Bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> and I would have done the same thing. It's the it kind of thing you can see Vince doing though, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Of course. No matter what no matter whether he meant it or not, it's the kind of thing it's the kind of thing that Vince does. The next one is firing Alberto Del Rio for slapping uh, a member of staff. Oh, which was the biggest overreaction considering now he's back in the company. Yeah, and nothing happened to that member of staff for the racist comment. No. I think he got I think he left the company, like Is he mm. put the broad, I thought he was broad, still. Uh, No, I think he left the company according to the video. But uh I think uh like I said, the broad thingy back so it, it meant nothing. Mm. It kinda meant nothing, so they brought him back. Uh the next one, oh my god, this is good. This was a good one. This was a good one. Absolute good one. It was Batista. Batista, fine for bleeding. Because this whole racial, it was the, it was the whole bleeding situation. If you watch wrestling before, guys, you see at times that people cut themselves to get the blood out. You know, get the blood out and make it look as Juicing. real as it can be. Well, apparently put, Vince put a ban on that. But Batista went ahead and did it. Mm. And he got fined for it. And that's probably one of the reasons why Vince ended up leaving. Because he sucked the, it's, it's, he sucked the excitement, Vince, out of Batista doing that. That's what it says on the video anyway. Batista's really got some issues with Vince now, hasn't he? He's, yeah. I don't blame him, to be honest with you. No. This whole PG He basically is not said he's fucked Titus O'Neil over. Yeah. He probably missed him really over, too. happy about the whole Titus O'Neil situation. Who, Batista? Oh, yeah. Well, Batista told him to quit, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> getting involved where he doesn't need to be getting involved, as usual. <laughs> I think Batista could be, I think Titus O'Neil could be a movie star to be honest with you he could be in that movie role um, obviously it depends what role he gets put in of course but I think he could be in that movie star role but yes. it depends what film he, he gets in he kind of reminds me of Terry Crews yeah yeah obviously he's not as jacked up as Terry Crews but oh Christ no one's as jacked up as Terry Crews <laughs> yeah yeah 
But he, he, there is a bit of Terry Crews about him in, in terms of, you know, acting and romanship. And mm. Anyway, the fine that Batista got for that was 100k. Before I jump the gun, is Triple H and The Undertaker on this list? I don't know. I don't remember that much, to be honest with you. Okay. I'll wait till the end. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will wait till the end. Right. The next one was double booking controversy. Now, it was meant to be a raw. I think Vince booked an arena where the Denver. I think it's the Denver Nuggets play basketball or St. Louis Rams or something. Um, but uh, they got double booked. They had an agreement to book to book Raw on the show, but then they brought. But then uh, the person who made the agreement with Vince to to allow Raw to be on there also made an agreement to have a basketball match on there. So they had to take. So Vince had no choice but to take Raw and move it from where it was supposedly gone to the Staples Center in Los Angeles. Hence, the it was the night where they had the main event when it had uh, Jerry Lawler. Mr. Anderson, Mr. Kennedy, Batista, John Cena, and MVP, dressed up as LA Lakers, all in LA Lakers jerseys, and it had Miz, <coughs> Cody Rose, Ted DiBiase, Randy Orton, and The Big Show, all in Denver, I believe it was Denver Nugget jerseys. A basketball-themed main event on Raw. And that was basically Vince's way of saying, up yours. The next one was the Huckster and the Nacho Man. This was basically Vince's spiteful way of trying to get back at Ted Turner. Uh, what do you guys think of this? Or what do you guys remember of this? Because uh... I thought they were pretty funny. And quite frankly, if you watch the Monday Night Wars, Bischoff says him and Ted found them funny too. I think only one person that took offence to it was me, Gene Oakland. Because mm. he hated the Scheme Gene character. <laughs> but Ted found them funny, and Bischoff even found them funny. Well, yeah, if they, if they found them, if the people that themselves are getting the piss taken out or find them funny, then fair enough. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it, it's, it's a spiteful way of trying to get back at somebody, but, you know, if it was the spiteful way... You know, try to, you know, fire a shot at them. It didn't work. Because like I say, when somebody comes back and says, oh, I found them hilarious. Hmm. Backfired. Right. What do you, got anything to say on that, Rox? I thought it was funny. I think everybody thought it was funny. It's fun. The next one is the destruction of the Ultimate Warrior. Now, this is based on what happened at SummerSlam 1991, quite frankly, because behind the scenes, Vince held uh, Ultimate Warrior held up Vince for more money to go out and do the supposed main event, which was Hogan and the Warrior against the Triangle of Terror, with Sid Justice as a referee. And obviously, people and obviously Vince fired him after the show and everything. And then fast forward years on, they made the self destruction of the Warrior. Because him and Vince had some beef. And uh, obviously they've made amends now. Or they did make amends before he died. Yeah. But that was... Uh, and everyone yeah. now regrets that DVD. Yeah. And I regret watching it. Yeah. And Warrior was <laughs> genuinely offended by it. Of course I would be. To be honest. You know, I definitely would be. If it was me. And number one... I don't know if it was an overreaction. I don't know if I'd call it an overreaction. Was the Montreal school job? Well, I guess he was protecting his main championship, exactly. wasn't he? It, like I said to you earlier on, considering what Medusa did to the women's title, yeah, you could understand why he did it. I'd say the others were overreactions, but number one wasn't. I mean, like I said, considering what he did with what Medusa did to the women's title when she went out on Nitro and put it in the bin. You could understand why he did what he did. Yeah. Looking back on it. You can, I guess you can see it from both sides. Yeah. I would, I would call it an overreaction, though. No, not really. 
Okay. I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't call it an overreaction. Yeah. And that is the end. So Taker and Triple H weren't on it. Nope, Taker and Triple H weren't on it. And Vince, tri- Vince what was that? Um, fined them both for using chair shots to the head at WrestleMania 27. What you, the hell did they sell? Oh, no, 27, the, uh, the match before that, no, yeah. No, 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 that was the match before, yeah, the, the brawl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, basically the brawl, which left uh, Undertaker going out in a gurney. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe that chair shot to the head and can cost him then or something. Yeah, that's what that, but yeah. That's what basically happened, quite frankly. Must have done. There had to be a reason for for uh, Undertaker going out in that fucking gurney. Yeah. Anyway, guys, I'll call it there. Um, we'll take a fab. We'll take a quick time out. <coughs> oh, excuse the cough. We'll take a quick time out, and I'll be back right after this with the promo. Stay tuned. Be sure to listen to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. What? What? Every Sunday with Kenny Killer and the Gowdom Sugar Shoes. Yes! Yes! With all the news, views, and laughter that you want. They like jet airplanes. They like long limousines. Every Sunday, the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast on Podomatic, iTunes, and YouTube. So why don't you choke on that, slap nut? And we're back for the final part of the Wrestling Madness podcast. Now, if these great guys, these great guests would step aside for one minute and just sit back, relax, and listen, i got a promo to do. This podcast started in 2013 when I did the Wrestling Revolution podcasts for CVFM Radio, a local radio promotion here. Now, it built on from there because I started getting the hang of this and I thought, maybe I can create something of my own. You know, create something of my own. Because I've seen all these YouTube videos and stuff like that about wrestling where they review their wrestling shows and whatever. I started going, yeah, maybe I can create something. Um, so, fast forward to April of, 25th, of 2014. Um, I got everything good. Uh, I thought we could do something here and we could see what's going on here. And then, like I say, February, I made my debut on a show that I know you know very well, Daz, and I know Roxy knows very well as well, and that is the Wrestling Matters podcast edition of, you know, Sunday Segway. And that's how the Wrestling Matters podcasts built or start came from that's why i said wrestling matters podcast because that's why the wrestling matters podcast idea came from sunday segway because i was on that show had a blast and uh shout out to you kitty sir and it built in from there so fast forward on april 7th it was born yay and uh many of you people probably think was this an hour or two hours beforehand no it wasn't no, it wasn't. Because from the ground, I had to build this fucking thing from the ground up. Which I'm sure Daz did when he start, first started Max Wrestling Podcast. <coughs> and he had to stand it up here. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember correctly, the very first show that I did was at least 30 to 40 minutes long. So I had to build and 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 build to get to, where I'm, to, to the point that I'm at today which I'm now on the Swift Talk Network, you know, doing hour, maybe two hour shows. So, fast forward on, a little wrestling promotion in my local hometown decided to help me out a little bit, or wanted to help me out, do, or do business. They said, if I mentioned them on the podcast, which I, which I had no problem doing, they would get me in their shows for free. I was like, deal. So, you know, one thing led to another, went to their shows, but the thing that really broke me away from them is because of the fact that I used to always bust their balls on the show. You see, what you guys need to understand is if I go to a wrestling show and I review it and something bad was on that show or something that I didn't like was on that show, I don't give a fuck who you are. Okay? That's why we do it on the WWE. I don't care, I don't care who you are. You're going to get called out on it. And 
The biggest thing that annoyed me about this wrestling this wrestling company, <coughs> the biggest thing that annoyed me about them was they used to always cry and whinge and complain about it. Every time I'd go to their training sessions or whatever, I'd hang out there for a bit or maybe take part, they would always bitch and moan about it. And they'd go, wang, 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 this and this, this and this. You know, and even one point, there was a, they had a show on at the Liberties in town where they had a number one contender's Royal Rumble match. The winner faces a, takes a shot at their champion. And they had the champion in the last two of the Rumble, which is predictable. And everybody walked out loving that show, except for one person, me. Because I got called out about it, whether I liked it or not. And I told him straight, I fucking hated it. Whether anybody liked it or not. And then... One person even called me out on Facebook saying, oh, if you've got something to say when you come down and say it to the face, I was like, okay. And I went down on Monday and I told him straight to the face. You know? What you guys got to understand, all you haters out there, if you guys call me out and you tell me, or basically ask me, do I feel froggy? I'm going to fucking jump. Okay? I will jump. I will jump as far as I can jump. But anyway, it, it turns out that he was using me to get the podcast because I ended up back in the ring. I had no intentions of working in the ring. I wanted just to do podcast work. That's all I wanted to do. But he was trying to get me back in the ring, which eventually he did. And I had no complaints about it. I mean, at one point, I was holding somebody back for Doug Williams to chop, so I had no complaints about it. But it's the decision-making and the booking stuff which made me break away from it. I mean, you try and work with somebody, and then it just gets into a situation where it just drives you insane. And then... You know, certain things, certain things happen and everything, and I just got sick of it. So I had to go a new direction, which ended up building, you know, this stand-up uh, for pro wrestling, which is what I stand up for on this podcast. And this goes out to all my haters out there. I had a lot of people during this two-year time that always say to me, oh, yeah, uh, wh why are you making podcasts for? Why are you making podcasts for? Nobody listens to them. I'm not asking you to fucking listen to them, you idiots. I am asking you, you know, I'm creating a wrestling podcast. At the end of the day, you have to be a wrestling fan to listen to these podcasts that me, that Max Wrestling do, that Sunday Segway do, that uh, Offshoot Radio do. You have to be a wrestling fan because if you sit there and you're not a wrestling fan and you listen to the stuff that we talk about on these shows, you're not going to have a clue what the fuck we're talking about. You'd be basically listening to a brick wall or something. Because you're not going to have a clue. And through all the hard times, all the job centers bullshit, and, and everything, I have worked my ass off to get to where I'm at today. Now, if you'd have told me April 7th, I was going to hit 100, would I have said, yes, yeah, I'm going to do it? No, I probably wouldn't. Because it takes hard work. It takes commitment. It takes a full-time commitment, even though you're not making money from it yet. It takes the passion. And it takes your undivided attention, too, to make this happen. And like I've said many, many times, and even Max and even uh, Daz will agree with me on this as well, editing is a pain in the ass. <coughs> But the more you edit, no, the more you edit, the more you enjoy it. That's right, the more you want it. That's why we've done this for two, that's why we've done this the way we've done it. That's why I've done this for two years. And all you haters out there that don't like it, don't listen to the podcast. Because people like me ain't got time for you morons. We cater to Western fans that speak the mind, that want to tell the truth and not be kayfabe. That's what that idiot told me to be one time. Oh, be kayfabe, be kayfabe. No, kayfabe died in 1997. And plus, I didn't create this podcast to be fake. I created the most real podcast that I can do. Okay? And it got to the point where 2015 was a very productive year for me. Because it made me re realize that I'm sick of people dictating my life. There's only one person that dictates my life, and that's me. 
And I want a big... And on that being said, guys, I want to say a big thank you to everybody who supported me these past two, one and a half, close to two years. Sunday Segway, Kitty and uh, Shugs, love you guys. Thank you so much for what you've done. James, Roxy, Mike Rodriguez, my arch nemesis. You know, thank you guys for what you've done for me as well. Yeah, I'll bring some other people up as well. Tip Vicious. Darren Dyer, Vicky Earls, and many people like that as well who have come on this podcast. Billy Johnson as well. All you guys, thank you so much for coming on the podcast or even showing your support to this podcast. I want to thank Daz and the Max Wrestling team because without them, I wouldn't be on the Swift Talk Network every Monday at 9 o'clock UK time, 4 p.m. Eastern time. You know, and I probably wouldn't be doing this Wix website that I'm doing as well, which is getting my shit out there as well. It doesn't matter how I do it, as long as I get my podcast out there, I could care less what I have to do. I could care less. And I am sick and tired of hating all the haters, all the dislikes. It doesn't bother me one bit. Quite frankly, I think it's laughable. But it can be a little frustrating when you see all these morons out there that try and troll you. Why? Because they ain't got the balls to step up and do it themselves. Well, to all you haters out there, I want to find out who you are. And quite frankly, each and every one of you ain't worth the time or the place. You want to keep disliking my shit? You want to hate my stuff? You want to throw bad comments at me? Do it. Because it doesn't affect me one bit. I do this. I do what I do because I enjoy it. Wrestling is my life. It always has been ever since I was a little wee child. And this is the reason why I do this podcast. Because I'm a wrestling fan. And there's one thing I've learned being a wrestling fan. Everybody has an opinion. Whether it's good, bad, or ugly. I want to thank Daz for coming on the podcast. I want to give a shout out to Roxy as well. Who unfortunately had to leave because of connection problems. Doesn't matter, Rox. You're going to hear this podcast anyway. I love you, Dal. Thanks for coming on. You know I love you so much. You know you know we all love you. Just get over that shy business anyway because I'm a buy now for one second. And to everybody who's supporting me out there, whether it's here on the podcast, on the Wrestling Matters channel, I love you guys. I cater to you. I don't cater to the morons out there. And like a great wrestler once said, guys, we've only just begun. You know, diamonds are forever. And so was the Wrestling Matters podcast, whether you like it or not. My name is Anthony Walker. Wrestling matters till death. Because it always will be about professional wrestling. Till next time, 101. See you later. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. Professional wrestling, this is it. This is us standing up. Yes, 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 yes. That's 1314. Tell death. Dina, I am the best in the world. Because that's the bottom line. The Stone Cold Simpson!